Hello, and welcome to worship at Decorah Lutheran Church. We're glad you could join us today. We begin our service, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our service with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. 
Amen. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and the resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom, that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading today from the first Kings, the third chapter. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness and righteousness and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in the place of my father David, although I am only a child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people so numerous they cannot be counted or numbered. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. Here ends our first reading. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs, it becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. And he told them another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Here ends our gospel reading. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Have you noticed something here? Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, talking about the kingdom of heaven. And it's interesting what he doesn't do. He doesn't go into a long description of what it'll be like. He doesn't go into a complicated and esoteric, rather, dissertation, discussion about the kingdom of God and what it will mean and how it will come about and all of those things. 
No. He relates the kingdom of God to simple, understandable, everyday things. I think that's the trouble sometimes when we try to talk about theology, when we try to talk about what it means to be the people of God and part of the kingdom of God, we get into some rather obscure discussions sometimes. And they're wonderful to do. And it's wonderful to have discussions like that. And, and frankly, I enjoy having a discussion like that now and again. To really stretch my mind and my imagination and to try and understand more fully what it is to say I am a part of God's kingdom. But in the end, what I need and what we all need is something real, something practical, something, I hesitate to say it, but something honest. And that's how Jesus approached the crowds who were gathered. That's how Jesus approached the, the, the apostles who, who gathered around all the disciples who came to hear what he had to say. He didn't give them a dissertation. He didn't give them a theological treatise. He told them simple, everyday images. I remember reading one time about the Gettysburg Address. Did you know that President Lincoln wasn't the prime speaker that day? In fact, the, the press, when they reported on the dedication of that cemetery at Gettysburg, they seemed rather embarrassed by what the president had to say. Because the main speaker that day went on for over an hour talking about all of the battles and all of the war and all of the sacrifices and everything that was involved leading up to that moment. And it was regarded as a wondrous and tremendous speech. And then President Lincoln got up and spoke for just a couple minutes, spoke just a few lines. And yet, it is those few lines that he spoke that are remembered and shared and celebrated today. Four score and seven years ago, you know it. He learned from the master. He learned from our Savior. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. You know, it starts out little, it starts out tiny and small. It's just a little seed planted inside of you. And yet that seed can grow into something great and mighty that lives in you and bears fruit in you. The kingdom of heaven is like a little bit of yeast and you take that little bit of yeast and you mix it with the good things the the flour and the water and this oil and and it sits there and it grows and it grows and it takes those simple ingredients and makes something delicious and wonderful and nutritious and filling and the kingdom of heaven is like Finding something unexpected and finding something that's really rare and precious and beautiful and making that the most important thing that you have. The kingdom of heaven is not glory and honor and wonder and might. The kingdom of heaven is that seed of God's word planted in us. The kingdom of heaven is that little leavening that takes who we are and makes us great. 
The kingdom of heaven is that little treasure that we find that becomes the greatest treasure of our lives. I still enjoy great and, dis and long discussions about the theology of the cross and uh, what is the church and who are the people of God and how do we live out our place in the kingdom of heaven. But we have to start here with a seed, with some yeast with a pearl, with a word of God, planted and stirred and blessed in us that becomes God's work in us and through us. And we become the kingdom of God. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you're able to join us at our parking lot service this Sunday, the 29th of Ju July, we will, be, uh, we will be sharing the communion together at that service. But even if you can't, hear the words of our Savior. Called into unity with one another and all of creation, let us pray for the people of all the world. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things. A shrub, baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Summer is here, Lord. We see the crops growing. We see people outside working and gathering for fun. Watch over everyone who gathers outside. Let the weather be kind and let everyone be safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're struggling with plans for fall and winter in the midst of this pandemic. Are there ways for us to teach, to work, and to worship indoors this year? Give us your wisdom and guidance so that we can see the best ways to live and work in these troubled days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. People continue to get colds, need surgery, struggle with jobs and income, live with chronic conditions and depression. Send your healing help to everyone who suffers in any way. Hear us as we share the special needs and thanks that we offer today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by inspiring the witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints into light. We remember this weekend Don Knudsen, who's laid to rest, and all the loved ones we have lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And now neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor angels, nor rulers, nor anything in all creation is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. May God the Creator, Christ our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit the Sustainer be with you and bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and live in Christ. Thanks be to God.